Did you know that the Bible reveals five different types of prophetic gifts? Let's look to the scripture now as we explore these fascinating expressions of the Holy Spirit's power. But first, tell me in the comment section, what is your most powerful encounter with the prophetic? Let's look now at the first type of prophetic gift, the word of knowledge. We see reference to this found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is the supernatural acquisition of knowledge. It's the ability to, by the Holy Spirit, see the situation. I'll give you an example. Years ago, I was ministering in a house church, and when I looked at the pastor, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The moment I looked at the pastor, I saw in my mind flash before me a silver car. And I saw the silver car get into a car accident. And I knew by the Spirit that the person in the car was a woman. And so I asked the pastor, Pastor, do you know a woman who drives a silver car who was recently in a car accident? His jaw dropped, his eyes opened wide, he was shocked. He said, yes, my sister drives a silver car, or she drove a silver car, and she was in a car accident just a couple weeks ago. And then the Holy Spirit gave me the next instruction. You know, we prophesy in part. He showed me why he revealed that. The Holy Spirit in that instant gave me a word for his sister. So he called his sister on the phone. She couldn't believe that the Holy Spirit had revealed that. She thought that they had told me. But of course, it came by the Holy Spirit. It was the word of knowledge in action. So I was able to give her a prophetic word. Now, the brother, the pastor, knew that his sister drove a silver car and he knew that she was in a car accident. That was knowledge that he had acquired through natural means. Someone told him that his sister was in a car accident. All of the family members present there knew that the sister drove a silver car and that she had been in a car accident. They had the natural acquisition of that knowledge. But the Holy Spirit gave me that same knowledge through supernatural means. So the word of knowledge is knowledge about a situation, the past and the present, and he gives you that knowledge through supernatural means. So it's something that you could otherwise know, but that you know instead by the Holy Spirit. An example of this is found in John chapter four, when Jesus is ministering to the woman at the well. He, by the Spirit, was able to tell her all about her past and her present. And in response to that supernatural demonstration, the woman believed the gospel. In both the Old and New Testament, we see examples of prophetic figures revealing information about people's past and present through supernatural means. So the word of knowledge is the ability to, by the Holy Spirit, see the situation. It's the supernatural acquisition of knowledge, and it has to do with the past and the present. Let's look at number two. The second type of prophetic gift, the word of wisdom. Now, the word of wisdom uses the same reference as the word of knowledge, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses seven and eight. And the word of wisdom is very similar to the word of knowledge in that people can acquire wisdom through natural means. There's worldly knowledge and there's worldly wisdom. There's supernatural knowledge and there's supernatural wisdom. So the word of wisdom is the supernatural acquisition of wisdom. With the word of knowledge, you can see the situation by the Spirit. But with the word of wisdom, you can see the solution by the Spirit. The word of wisdom empowers us to operate in God's instruction. It is that purposeful pull by the Holy Spirit on our lives. Examples of this are Solomon and Joseph, dream interpretation. Anytime that we saw the Holy Spirit helping an individual navigate a difficult circumstance, they were operating in something like unto the gift of the word of wisdom, which is a prophetic expression. It's to receive something from God that becomes useful information in the natural realm. So that is the word of wisdom, the ability to, by the Spirit, see the solution. So, so far we have number one, the word of knowledge, the ability to see the situation. Number two, the word of wisdom, the ability to see the solution. Now, number three, we have the gift of discernment. This is the ability to see the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 says, to another, the working of miracles, 
to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. The gift of discernment is the ability to see the spirit behind the message, behind the motive, and behind the ministry. Really, categorically speaking, every message, every motive, every operation will fall under either the satanic, the secular, or the spirit. Now, the gift of discernment is that prophetic ability to be able to tell where it falls in its category. Is it satanic? Is it of the world? Or is it of the Holy Spirit? Now, people who operate in the gift of discernment usually see things before others see them. They usually catch things that no one else catches. Having said that, let me make this clear. The gift of discernment is not the gift of criticism. The gift of discernment is not the gift of suspicion. All too often, I think that people have issues with the way ministries operate in their methodology or style. And because it contradicts their own personal preference, some people try to excuse their dislike of a ministry or of an individual by saying something like, well, something just doesn't sit right in my spirit. Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit is specific when he reveals these things to you. It's not as if he's just whispering, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but something isn't right about this. No, the Holy Spirit will be able to use the scripture to pinpoint what the problem is. So when something is vague, it's likely that it's your own preference or your own emotions that you're confusing for the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, the gift of discernment doesn't just point out the negative. The gift of discernment can also point out when something is positive. So if all you ever do is point out the negative, if all you ever do is criticize, then it's likely not the gift of discernment because if it was the gift of discernment, you would also often say this is of the Holy Spirit. It would be specific and it would include all of the different things that can be discerned, the secular, the satanic, and the spirit. The gift of discernment is more than just personal preference. It's not your own suspicions, and it always goes below the surface. It is not surface level analysis. It's the ability to see the spirit behind what's going on. Number four, insight. And this is the ability to see the soul. I'll explain that in a moment. Matthew 12, 25, Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 24 and 25. But if all of you are prophesying, and unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your meeting, they will be convicted of sin and judged by what you say. As they listen, their secret thoughts will be exposed, and they will fall to their knees and worship God, declaring, God is truly among you. Now, let me make this clear. I am not saying that anyone has the ability to read minds. You do not have the ability to read people's minds. And if anyone ever claims that, they're not being biblical. Rather, what you're seeing is what God reveals. God sees what happens in the mind. God sees what happens in the soul. And he can share this with you if he so chooses. Years ago, I was ministering in Southern California and I gave an altar call. The people packed the altar and as I ministered, walking back and forth across the platform, I was praying for them, asking for God to give them an encounter in his presence. And as I'm pacing back and forth, I hear someone shout, show me your glory, show me your glory, show me your glory. They were asking the Lord to reveal his glory to them. And then I looked over and I saw the boy who was praying that prayer. I pointed my finger at him and I said, you just asked God to show you his glory. And so now you're going to have an encounter in his presence. Well, the power of God came over him. He hit the floor and was completely transformed by the Holy Spirit's power. After the service, he comes up to me and he said, how did you know what I was praying in my mind? I said, what do you mean? He said, how did you know what I was praying in my mind when I was asking God to show me his glory? I said, you weren't praying in your mind. You were shouting it out. You were praying it aloud. He said, no, I never said that out loud. 
It's what I was praying in my mind. Now, again, I do not have the ability to read minds. So, so that's not where I'm going with this, nor is this a story about my ability to hear God. This is simply a story about the demonstration of power that comes only by the Holy Spirit. It's his power, it's his demonstration, it's his glory. But this is a great example of how this might work. The Holy Spirit can reveal the thoughts and intents of the hearts of others. This doesn't mean that you yourself can see that. It means that the Holy Spirit can. And when he so chooses, he can reveal it to you. That's a great advantage in life, that you know the one who knows the hearts and minds of others. So far, word of knowledge, see the situation. Word of wisdom, see the solution. Discernment, see the spirit. Insight, see the soul. Number five, prophecy, see the future. Now, this is probably the one that most people are familiar with when we talk about prophetic ministry, the ability to see the future. Mark chapter eight, verse 31 says, he then began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. Now, there are many examples that I could have given you from the scripture, but this is the example of Jesus describing his future. He was prophesying what would happen to him. When you flow in the prophetic gift that is prophecy, the traditional gift that we're all familiar with, this is the ability to see the future as God reveals it. Now, as I mentioned with the previous point, this is not your ability. This is not your insight. This is God's insight that is sovereignly revealed as he desires. The gift of prophecy is the ability to see the future. Now I'm gonna pray that God would give you a desire for the prophetic and that he would begin to reveal the gifts that he's placed in you. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for these beautiful expressions of the prophetic ministry. Lord, help us to keep these gifts in the right perspective that we might continue to seek you above all else. And Lord, as we seek you, reveal to us the prophetic gifts and abilities that you've placed in us. Father, I pray for that when receiving this now. And I ask you to begin to show them, reveal to them the prophetic gifts you've placed within them. We thank you for these wonderful gifts, Lord. Help us to use them unto your glory, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I want you to say it because you believe it, say amen. Well, if you enjoyed this teaching, don't forget to leave a like and also make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV. Click the notification bell when you do subscribe. And before you turn this video off or click on the next thing, I wanna challenge you to get involved. Look. We have thousands of supporters all around the world who are all doing their part. We need you to do your part too. Consider today supporting the work of this ministry through giving a one-time gift or becoming a monthly ministry supporter. For more information on how you can support the ministry, just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. And remember, your gifts help to fund the content creation, the live streams, and the events that we host all around the world. Bottom line, you're helping us to win souls and build believers. We wanna see salvation, healing, deliverance, and empowerment. Help us do it. Get involved with the work of this ministry by again, giving a one-time gift or becoming a monthly supporter, or if the Holy Spirit should lead you, do both. Again, information is found at davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. We're calling on everyone who's receiving from this ministry to do their part, get involved. Look, we give all the content away for free so that you might be blessed. Help us continue to give it away for free all around the world. And if you enjoyed this teaching and you were stirred in your faith concerning the prophetic, then you will love this message, how to know you are prophetic, nine important signs. I showed you what the prophetic gifts are, now it's time to see if the prophetic gifts are in you.